everybody, Ahmad here. Today I'm really excited. Uh, my friend Jackson, who's also known as Colored in Light on YouTube and on Instagram, he is actually gonna meet up with me right now. We're in this empty giant parking lot and it's a nice day, it's a little chilly, but it's overcast, so a really good day for filming. No rain so far today. Uh, but my friend Jackson owns an NC Miata with a 2.5 swap, awesome body kit on it, amazing, amazing car. But he also owns a Stage 2 DTI Mark 7, whereas I have a Mark 7.5 Stage 2 Golf R. So we are today going to swap cars. We're going to talk a little bit about how the different cars feel, because I know there's a lot of reviews out there and comparisons but I haven't really talked to many other people that own these cars and have driven them back to back, especially if you own one and it's fairly similarly spec'd. But just in general, what does the power look like? So he should be pulling up soon. There he is. God, his car looks good. What's up, dude? How's it going, man? How are you? Doing all right. Good to see you, man. Yeah, you too. Oh my Maybe god, it, it looks so good lowered. So what we've decided to do is we're actually going to just drive together in one of the cars each time. Probably going to have some shared footage, but we figured it's a little bit better for us to have banter with each other versus just us individually driving each other's cars and talking about it. We're going to ask each other some questions, maybe ask what some of the differences that you're feeling are or not. But let's go talk to Jackson and find out what all he's done to his car. All right, we're here with Jackson. Jackson owns this, I'm not even gonna attempt the year or anything. So Jackson, <laughs> tell us about your, uh, your GTI here. Sure, so it's a uh, 2017 Mark 7 GTI. It's a DSG transmission, so it is the Autobahn trim. So golf R brakes, it has the, the front diff, it has leather interior, sunroof, like pretty much everything that you would want in a golf outside of the plaid seats, which I kind of wish I would have gotten. But it's it's been a favorite of mine to drive. Outside of that trim specifics, uh, I went ahead and added some H&R springs. It has the rear sway bar. Uh, no wheels yet. I've got them sitting at home. Uh, so stay tuned for that if you do follow my channel. I decided to go with all the AeroFab kit. I know a lot of people do that and I, I just really like it. So it's V2 rear splitter, uh, AeroFab street side splitters, the V1 uh, spoiler extension. Uh, but I did similar to you, uh, blacked out the emblems, just did some little color matching vinyl underneath. I think it just looks a little bit cleaner. Uh, did the new tips, needed something bigger to look a little bit more aggressive. And then really as far as like the outside of the car goes, that's, that's it. Performance wise, it is a stage two tune by EQT with the DSG tune as well. Uh, downpipe, resonator delete. Uh, intake, it's an in-gen evolution intake, so it's an enclosed airbox. I had the open airbox, really kind of regret it, but I did stick these hood vents on it, so I needed something that was a little bit more enclosed. Otherwise, just some little dress-up bits here and there. Interior's pretty stock. Awesome. All right, well, we are going to go ahead and get in these cars and start some conversation about the differences. So Let's go. All right. All right, Ahmad, so tell us about your car. Obviously, it's a Golf R. Is it Mark 7, Mark 7.5, or? Uh, so this is a 2019 Mark 7.5. I bought it four or five months ago. I went from a Kia Stinger uh, to this car. Uh, really wanted the all-wheel drive aspect of it, and I this is a 7.5. I wanted the digital dash. I know that sounds okay. weird, but something that I, I really, it. really wanted, and I got it, and it's awesome. I started with some basic cosmetic stuff, so I did kind of like the side skirts or splitter, whatever you want to call it. I did add the, the same mud flaps that I've added on the last like four cars that I've owned. Okay. Um, they're universals, uh, but I have I really like the way they look and they're cheap, easy to install. I've done the Maxon side corner splitters. 
and then the center splitter is an eBay splitter. Other than that, other than that, just the lips and stuff. I did the uh, new emblem. I got that from some guy in England. Just blacked out the V Dub logo. Uh, did the spoiler. So this is actually my favorite. This is like a forty-eight dollar spoiler from eBay. I like it. I like and it. And then I did some knockoff of the Audi S5. I don't know. Every there's so many different Audis that have those wheels. I preferred these because I didn't want to deal with the very aggressive offset that the Audi ones have, and they poke quite a bit, and I just okay. didn't want that. They're eight inch wide. Eight point five. Eight point five. Okay. And the offset is thirty eight. I have to double check that. Yeah. We'll, we'll post it on the video. Okay. When I yep. Uh, right. Right here. Here's the specs. Yeah. So no spacers or anything. So it actually fits pretty well. I do have iBox springs sitting at the house. They've been sitting basically for three months of the four months I've owned this car. Haven't installed them yet. Performance wise, I do have a turbo inlet. It's an Amazon brand. And then I have an eBay intake. It's called Kyoto or something like that. Sounds really good. And recently I just did stage two. So I did a Unitronic stage two tune. Because of that, I had to upgrade my clutch to a stage two. Oh, yeah. And then with that, I also did the CTS catless downpipes. So, okay. very recently, I just hit my break in maybe two weeks ago on the clutch. Nice. So, I've been, I've been driving it pretty aggressively, and it's awesome. It's a world of a difference on the car. But so, the stage two, I think, is the biggest investment I've made so far. Okay. You've had a ton of cars, and I mean, more than I can even remember off the top of my head. So, you replaced the stinger with this car right yes like if you could pick one or two things that since you've had so many cars like what are one or two things about the golf r that are like okay i get why people buy the golf r yeah yeah why would somebody spend 40k on a pre-owned <laughs> a golf you know, golf yeah <laughs> um number one reason was manual i okay. went for the stinger was awesome i loved the transmission for what it was but Honestly, I like Mr. Manual transmission, and the number one point of buying this was to get a manual car that was all-wheel drive, turboed, and fun to drive. Okay. And the number two, the handling, hands down. Even on stock suspension, yeah, it is such a good handling car. A pretty good comparison is like they are VW Audi, and I always tell people like you get Audi-ish interior mm -hmm. and features in a cheaper car, but it feels like you're driving something that's a little bit more yeah. expensive than it so i just explained this to my wife and my, the biggest thing that i always say is the thud of the door which everybody yeah. talks about it's like yep. you get that german door thud yeah because like when we closed our ev6 i'm like eh. i closed yep. my stinger it felt like a toy it was i was definitely on the camp of why would you spend this much money on a euro car when you can buy a veloster n or something like yeah. that but there there is a little bit of a difference i think they're all cool cars but there was something very refined about this. And now that I've had it for four months, it's starting to wear off, like the honeymoon yeah, period. Yeah. Um, but I'm, it's still keeping things interesting. If you're cool, we'll set off, do some exhaust clips real quick, and then we'll uh, get on the road and test it out. Yeah. weird to get in this car having a manual and it feels like my car but <laughs> yeah that's it's true like, okay yeah yeah I'm gonna stall it and then are you you're in we'll just race go to mode? race yeah. oh shit okay and then i do have my throttle controller so it definitely help, okay. uh, makes a little bit of a difference all right so we are in the mark 7.5 golf r First impressions, I know I'm a little rough on it, but it's the stage two clutch and uh, it's really, really smooth. This feels a lot more refined than, feels a lot more refined than my car and it's possibly, oh shit, there's like torque there. <laughs> wow, 
this is like, I know we're only going 20, but. Well, the throttle controller is set fairly high, so it okay. is pretty, pretty responsive. Okay. The gears are very, very, um, not notchy, but they're like clicky. Is that your intake? Yeah. That sounds so good. <laughs> Wow. Wow, dude. Holy shit. This is way faster than my car. No joke. That is so incredibly surprising. Wow. You're not going to like driving my car. No, I'm sure I will. <laughs> I, there's something about a fast, fun automatic to me. Like, especially one that shifts very quickly and from what I've heard that the DSG shifts very quick and then it makes those uh what do they call the farting noise or whatever oh, the DSG farts yeah it's pretty fun like for a like paddle shifting it's pretty fun to do anything about the interior that feels very different outside of obviously like this um the yeah I mean your steering wheel feels newer but that that obviously <laughs> makes sense the digital dash is really sweet your radio is the I think I have the 7.5 inch screen. I think you have the eight and a half inch screen. But otherwise, otherwise it feels pretty much like my car. It makes some good noises. <laughs> very comfortable, very quiet in here. And it's just like a really nice little place to sit and drive around. But this going 40 down a little side street, it doesn't feel like you've done anything to the car at all <laughs> like it sounds a little different sure but i mean it's it's nice yeah and this is on the on race mode it's the stiffer suspension and you could definitely feel the difference when you're driving like down a crappy road like parker yeah you can feel the difference between the two but <laughs> we're losing gopro stuff how much does the throttle controller change because it feels uh, like i'm barely pushing quite a bit the gas. actually so if you uh hit the bottom left button on it and maybe switch it. keep scrolling through it until it says 1.7 on the mode yeah so uh, keep on going again again oh shit uh 0. there 7. yeah it lightens oh, yeah, it up that's a little way bit different. yeah so 2.2 is where I, where i keep it and you can turn it back to normal but it feels so slow to me when it's normal yeah so. i'm going to change it back to whatever that was it just press it one time okay yeah, yeah i'm going to change it to that it feels the, you know, the power comes on so much quicker and earlier than my car does. Yeah, feel free to punch it. Yeah, that's that's nice. It's incredibly smooth. Incredibly smooth. Yeah, that real hot spot I think is between like 35 to 5. Okay. Like uh, whenever you get on the tollway. Like I usually start to try to stay above Okay. 2500 when I'm driving. Just because the low end is fine, but it's so much fun in that mid range. Okay. So, in the stage two tune that you did, did it change any of like, did it raise your rev limiter or anything? Like oh, it that? did. It, okay. I, it, well, now I'm getting confused between my S4 and this because I just got my S4 yeah. tuned. I'm not sure. Somebody who has a Unitronic probably could tell us in the comments okay. or whatever. Yeah, if you, if you have Unit um, Unitronic, leave it down below. Because the EQT, my my setup is pretty simple it's just like it's yours is is yours an off-the-shelf tune or yeah. is it custom tune okay yeah off the shelf. mine's yeah, yeah. off-the-shelf too so it's just kind of it is what it is oh yeah dude that is awesome yeah that is so feel free fun. to get it a little higher This is the stiffer. Yeah. So if I switch to. See there, that's very like. Smooth. Very smooth, <laughs> yeah. It's not all that loud either. Well, yeah, I'm comforted close to the valves. Oh, okay. Um, and race, it barely makes a difference, but it does when you're like getting. Oh, like, okay, so letting off the gas, yeah. you can hear a little bit better. Power is always 
is there and it just feels like like you downshift and you just start you're moving pretty much and even at you know i'm going 70 right now just that little tap like yeah in sixth gear it's like oh, okay we're gonna we're gonna get moving so if you were just driving sensibly and needed to go around someone it probably would general be... public you could pass on yeah. yeah all right i'm going to let you drive my car yeah okay. i'll let you drive you'll drive it a lot smoother than i will <laughs> or two of the video if we do a, like a follow-up i guess you could say is we should do some draggy runs between the two yeah. Now, granted, the DSG will shift significantly faster than I will ever in this car, but I think some draggy runs would be cool. Maybe just kind of like what I did between the Stinger and the EV6 when I first got the EV6. And then since we would probably do those up in Mexico, yeah, we could uh, also do some curvy roads. Because I'd love to compare coming out of corners with your front wheel drive versus kind of like how this yeah, feels. Yeah, for stuff. sure. So. Okay. All right. Switch spots. Dude, I think it sounds really good. <laughs> so annoying. I know that, but it's you know it's so loud out there. Too. I know, exactly. That's it's, what I think is so annoying about it. So I try to like stay away. I like the burbles, I don't like the pops. Like I wish I could just get just a burble tune. Because the burbles are awesome. <laughs> so dumb. That's like, if you can get it, you might as well. Yeah, I mean, it, I can like, literally press a button and turn it off. Right. So, like, yep. I'm not. Yep. But race mode just feels so much better to me, driving wise. I always have mine. I put mine in custom mode. And, oh man, it feels different in the passenger seat. Okay. Because I was already kind of like, man, do I want this or not? Yeah. And the tune basically saved me keeping this car. I mean, don't so get you, me wrong. So you like it. The tune definitely makes the difference. Yeah, it does. It enables me to not feel like I'm missing out on something. All right. I am on my way to now drive the GTI. Let's go. Let's do this. Yeah, this is no weird. Clutch. You're absolutely right. Like, it's weird because it's the same car. Right. But everything is like slightly different just because of the transmission and yep. The the weird part is this shift knob looks like a manual. Yeah. Is this aftermarket? It is. Okay. Yeah. Shift knob is yeah. aftermarket. And yeah. the positioning of it also looks like it's like in right. First. It's, it feels like the same. It feel, everything feels the exact same. Yeah. Um, you'll be fine in this mode. I don't. I don't like the uh, automatic transition. Tra I don't like the sport mode in the auto transmission. It's okay. too like. It hangs a little bit. So, how do you want to drive in um, with the paddles? We'll you want to use the paddles, or yeah, with the paddles. So this does have adjustable suspension. Yeah, like the dampening. Yep. Adjust? Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't with know the, that. Okay. With the Autobahn, the ah, Autobahn trim, cool. you get the adju adjust adjustability of that. And you get valved exhaust. No valve. No valve no exhaust. Valved exhaust. Okay. Yeah. So exhaust is what by it itself, is. and okay. steering is in sport. Uh, suspension is in normal. And do you have any mounts or anything done? Because I feel more vibration. And I have the dog bone mount, analog boost gauge. So, because this, the boost gauge on here is not accurate. It's <laughs> stupid. At all. <laughs> all right, let's do this. I'm excited. I've never really driven a lot of GT. In fact, I think this might be the second GTI I've ever driven. First gear is fairly useless yeah. if you're taking off because of the front wheel drive. You just don't really get traction. So, if you go to like second gear 2000, you're, you, that's kind of where, if I'm like looking to go a little crazy, that's kind of where, oh shit, an NSX. Yeah. And when did you do, how long after you bought the car did you do the stage two? Uh, I bought the car with 28,000 miles on it and I think I did the tune at like 
38,000. Oh, okay. And I've driven it across the country. Like, I've driven this car a lot, just like you've driven, and it's pretty flawless. <laughs> it's, a, it's definitely front wheel drive. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It almost sounds like those old superchargers, like yeah, it does, the Pontiac it? GTPs or whatever yeah. they were. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the. Oh my god, <laughs> that's the uh, turbo inlet pipe with the intake. It makes a, it's like a goose. Dude, that's quick. Yeah, it's not bad. I definitely feel the power difference. Yeah, but I don't really feel like. The pull, I mean, I'm not going from like a dig or anything, yeah. so I'm not feeling like the front wheel drive pull or anything. Obviously, we want to take some corners to really see the difference, but like if I wanted to pass somebody. Oh, yeah. It gets out of its Dude, own it way. it shifts. I like the shifts. I need more open road, though. Yeah. I see what you're talking about where there's definitely a little bit more boost lag, I guess is the word. Yeah, it kind of. This, that 3,500, 4,000 range is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's right in there. If you can, like, if, you, if you're going and you kind of catch your shifts right there, it just, that's what I have to do to get it to feel like yours. And it kind of falls off a little bit. Oh, yeah, I like this. So easy to drive. So the one question that a lot of people ask, I was talking about this to you earlier, is, is the Golf R, if you don't live in an environment where you need all-wheel drive, is spending that much extra on a Golf R. I mean, anywhere from 10 to 20K more to yeah. get a Golf R over a GTI, a used one. Is it worth it? That, I mean, that's a really good question. In, like, some senses, yes, the Golf R is more worth it because you are getting more than just the all-wheel drive. You do get that bigger turbo. You're not getting more car, but you're getting more capability. <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. Yeah. It's a fast little economy hatchback. So what is what does sport do that you don't have on custom? Uh stiffer suspension and the cracks and burbles or whatever. Okay here. Uh go go to like oh there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh my god, it sounds like a machine gun. It does. It's so different than mine. It sounds like a machine gun. That's so funny. It's very different. Yeah. Like, and then a cat delete probably helps. So you don't get a lot of burbles. You get mostly the pops. It's a lot of pops. Yeah. yeah. Crackle tunes. There it is. There's a little bit of burble. <laughs> it's just funny. It's just like I'm almost 40 and it still puts a smile on I my know. stupid face. It's, it's like if you're a car being the Golf R tune and everything yours is like a brute like like a like a brutish guy like a boxer this yeah. is like a teenager with an energy drink and it's actually there's a decent amount of difference when it comes to performance and not necessarily in a bad way they're just they are fairly different the power delivery is a little bit different now granted neither of us is stock so i'd be curious right. about stock to stock oh dude <laughs> yeah it pulls it gets going. Yeah, even past 5,000, it actually pulled pretty decently. The DSG is, it's awesome. <laughs> it's, it's actually really a lot nice. faster. Like, I wish I had more access to, like, being able to kind of shift through the gears. Yeah. But from what I've experienced so far, it is a pretty quick shifting transmission. Based it's on, yeah, it's very fast. Oh, shoot. Uh -oh. That's not where I meant to turn in. Sorry, dude. Uh -oh. Nope, I'm going to go. And then watch the level. Oh, yeah, back up, back up, back up. Uh... Reverse. Right there. Now nah, I just look like a fool. Nah, you're good. No. <laughs> 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 oh my god, that's good. It's fun. Now <laughs> <laughs> nah, I just look like an ass. Up, and then there you go. Interesting. So that's not awesome. bad though, huh? Yeah, no, it's fun. It's fun. That's a, that's a hoot. Dude, the suspension is actually, I didn't even comment on the suspension because yeah, it feels, it feels, but the thing is like on the highway, I can't really tell anyway. I want to feel what it's like going around corners and stuff like that. Like on a... From 
a daily perspective, there's definitely a pretty decent amount of difference in performance. It was really cool to kind of get the ability to drive these back to back because it really does show the difference between the two cars that I've seen and read about online. In a climate where you don't need all wheel drive, is it worth buying the Golf R over the GTI? To me, the answer seems still a little bit of a yes. There is a very different driving dynamic in the two cars. There's definitely obviously a power difference. And of course you can go and swap the turbo and make it a bigger on the GTI. But I still think there's a lot of dynamic difference between the driving experience. Overall though, I think the GTI is a hell of a car for the money. And if you really do have the budget, then I think the Golf R is definitely an upgrade. And if you live in a snowy climate, obviously I think the Golf R is a no-brainer. Let's go see what Jackson has to say. All right, Jackson, we're done. Yes. Initial, just quick two top two thoughts. Top two thoughts. Uh, it's totally different car while being the same exact car is a good way to put it. Like the GTI is, you're on that little edge of kind of wild with the Golf R. It feels like you're in control of the power the whole time. You're driving the car and it just feels like brute force with the bigger turbo compared to the IS20 turbo and yeah I, I'd say it's very different but also very very similar I can't say which one is better because they both act totally different ways I yeah. don't know which one I would prefer yeah you know, that's kind of how I came into my video was like I'm gonna love the golf R and I'm gonna want one but it's really hard to say it just kind of depends on what you want yeah. I guess yeah, there's, I don't think there's like a magical answer and that's what every video ends with. Yeah. Um, I think my general conclusion was obviously climate plays a role, but if you're in a climate where you don't need all-wheel drive, I do think there's a pretty decent difference between the two. There's a lot of dynamic difference yeah. um, you can feel. But at the end of the day, I don't think, and this is going to be that cliche answer, I don't think you can go wrong with either. No, I don't think uh, so. Yeah. They're a hell of a car for the money. The GTI, especially for the for the dollar, you might not get the horsepower per dollar as some, right. compared to some competitors, but the refinement, just the daily drivability, plus look at the way it looks. It just looks <laughs> so good. Yeah. yeah. All right, awesome. Well, Jackson, thank you, man. Yeah, thanks for coming. Thanks, thanks so much for letting me drive it. Had a great time. Definitely uh, some things to think about on my end. So. <laughs> Do you want to do a plug for your uh, YouTube or Instagram? Yeah, if you want to follow me, I'm at Colored and Light. On YouTube, Instagram, um, you can pretty much find me at those places. And I'll have my video up soon on driving a mods R. And it'll be fun to watch both videos. So definitely, if you watch his video, check mine out. And you can compare and contrast yourself. Awesome. Thanks, man. Yep. Thanks, buddy. Yep.